What's up, Internet? My name's Ori. Welcome back to the channel. It is Thursday, September 12th, day number 59 inside the Big Brother house. It's eviction day. Where do the votes lie? Who will be the first member of our jury? Also, Angela, she's going to do the pot. Let's talk about that, plus all the intel drama and more from yesterday's live feeds. But first, if you are new here, hit that subscribe button. You like this video, hit that like button, hit that notification bell. You'll never miss a video. You'll never miss a stream. To give you a little recap, if you haven't been keeping up with everything going on this past week, after MJ and Chelsea shocked us and many in the house by voting to keep Joseph over chemo, uh, being moved by his speech, Chelsea won HOH, nominated Chemo and Angela. MJ won the power of veto, and originally there were no plans to use it, and Chemo would likely be the one to be sent home. But after another Angela spiral, she saves herself from the block for a third time when MJ used the power of veto on Angela. Quinn was put up as the replacement nominee with him as the new target. Now, some of that we saw play out on last night's episode, including the embarrassing performance in Otev. Uh, I have a feeling how that all really played out was someone during the search asked someone else for the answer and they replied with Tucker. Obviously, that was wrong. I think many people heard that and they all just kind of ran with it instead of thinking for themselves, only MJ being the one uh, to actually get that correct. Also, something else that I kind of noticed uh, was Quinn once again showing how he is just a podcast listener and not a, a real super fan when he was trying to do the stockpile method where you just gather all of the cards for the possible answers and put them in a spot. But instead of just like, being in an area and putting all of them in one spot so you can easily grab them. He was like carrying them around like it was his school books. Like <laughs> completely obvious. It was even being called out by the people who were sitting on the sidelines. So uh definitely not exactly the ideal uh performance uh of that method. Um overall though the episode as a whole was a little lackluster. Uh the the edit was kind of interesting I bet for the casuals. Uh, it was kind of a shock because most of it was talking all about how keeping nominations the same, even when MJ won it, it was talking about not using the veto. It's like, yeah, I'm going to save Angela. You get real only for Angela spiral. And you almost have to give Angela a, like a little bit of credit. <laughs> like it's 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 kind of amazing how she's able to get this paranoia and take this big nothing burger of people just hanging out outside and spin that to cause enough chaos where she's potentially safe this week. Uh, and yeah, we end on a cliffhanger, so we don't actually see the uh, veto meeting. So we have that to look forward to tonight uh, for the eviction. Uh, so that'll be a lot of fun, which we will be live here on the channel for our eviction watch party. If you haven't come on out, there are a lot of fun where you get to see it all play down. Uh, now, it was a fairly chill day on the live feeds yesterday. Uh, and as a nominee, that's not what you want. You should worry if Wednesday before an eviction is chill. That means the vote is probably set and there's little that you can probably do. Quinn, though, did campaign. Uh, but really, his campaigns, if I had to describe them, uh, the best way possible. It was more like a goodbye than it really was a, can I have your vote? Like, of course he would ask, but it always just kind of felt more like he was talking about how much he loved that person, how, you know, good their connection was, uh, what it's, you know, their relationship's going to be outside of this game than necessarily trying to get their vote for him to stay. I will say Chelsea and MJ, they are conflicted uh, after their convos and they had a little chat about everything. They want to trust Quinn so badly but he's been so sketchy throughout the game they know that he won't look out for them he'll look out for himself at the end of the day the baggage of the penta and the collective being blown up is is still lingering with chelsea as well so she just knows there's all this stuff that he's done in the past she doesn't know if she can really trust him she her heart says she wants to but she doesn't want to trust her heart and then get uh you know uh just completely blindsided next week uh, if they decide to keep them, they said even the numbers make sense if they could trust him, but they just don't know if they can. 
plus you add in the Leah stuff and that's all to consider. Uh, and it's just too much because they don't trust her at all. <clears throat> so if you have to trust her, you have to trust Quinn and it's just not really working out well. Now, MJ and Angela, they actually chatted about the vote and the numbers as well. Angela wondering uh, whether keeping Quinn is the move or should they go after chemo? Both are threats in their own different ways. Quinn being comp threat, having wanted Angela out uh, a great line. She's like, he's a guy who's won me out since yesterday. Uh, so chemo also having uh, the trio makes him a big threat. Um, MJ was just pretty much saying like, I don't really know where to go either. I'm conflicted. Uh, Chelsea just wants us not it to be, uh, for it to be a split vote where she has to decide. Uh, so she's kind of saying, Hey, whatever you guys want to do, you guys want to do. Uh, Angela wonders like, does, does Chelsea not see TKR as a threat as a trio? Uh, and, uh, MJ kind of says she does, but I think also she feels good with them. Plus her and Cam are like this and the numbers are really weird. Uh, Angela was trying to pretty much get her to do like a final two, but MJ was just like, ah, I mean, we're ah, I saved you with the veto. Does that count? Like, like, I don't want to say that I'm going to promise you anything, Angela, because I'm not. <laughs> uh, they were funny enough, though, interrupted by t -Core who then ends up running to Chemo and Rabina saying like, hey, like this might be something to worry about. This could be a thing. MJ does damage control, uh, damage control with that later where she goes and uh, talks to uh, TKR just saying about what that whole convo was about saying like, yeah, Angela won the final two with me. And I was like, ah, I'm not promising nothing. Uh, we did then also get the Leah and Chelsea conversation. Finally, they met up and they talked for over an hour they were sitting on the bathroom floor of all places in the hoh like they could have there's there's a whole bed there's a whole couch area there's there's like three couches in the hoh room they could have sat in instead they decided to sit on the bathroom floor of the hoh to chat this out um leah talks about how like anything that people say in there can be uh you know misunderstood and taken the wrong way uh, and, you know, ever since she was a kid, like she's always felt like even when she knows she's telling the truth, she feels this need to kind of over explain everything. Really, Leah, I had no idea that you have this compulsion where you feel like you need to over explain everything. I never would have guessed. <laughs> um, Leah also talks about, you know, how she felt really hurt and like outcasted uh, by everyone else. Uh, even if it wasn't intentional, it's just how she made it made her feel and she started to feel like she doesn't even want to be in the house with people that don't like her. Um, uh, Leah also says that, you know, MJ and Chelsea, they were really high on her priority list, but she doesn't feel like that was kind of the same way for them. Uh, Chelsea on her end, though, does talk about how, like, she was frustrated with Leah isolating herself, kind of drawing attention to her when she wasn't even on the block and that nobody really believed Angela, but she was talking behind Leah's back and, you know, they end up talking about the vote a little bit, too, as well. And and Chelsea just says, you know, bottom line, it's hard for me to trust Quinn with so much that he's already done. You know, we talked about the Penta and the Collective and all that kind of stuff. Like, she she finds it just hard for him that he will stay loyal when he's already done things in the past. And for Leah, it's probably hard for her to see because, you know, she's got such a good connection with Quinn. She's like... Leah, if you put Quinn on the block, he would probably thank you for it, right? Like, that's how much he cares about you, and it's it's hard for, for Leah probably to understand why somebody else might not trust him as much, even though he's saying that he's going to stay loyal. Um, eventually, though, after this, uh, Quinn did get uh, to meet up with everyone, including Leah and Chelsea. Uh, Cam and MJ joined them as well. And uh, this was a talk again where he was kind of asking them for their votes, right? Uh, he says he would volunteer to be that one. He's like, listen, we got the five in the room. When it comes down to six, I'll be that volunteer to go up as the pawn. You can just put me up and I won't say anything. Like, I, I understand that what you guys are doing for me here now is saving my game. So it's only fair that I would be totally cool if you end up putting me on the block. Uh, when we got down to six, he's like, and then after that, even I would be totally fine if I'm the fifth person in that group and I'm kind of the bottom of the totem pole. Like, I get it. Uh, and I'll, I'll take that responsibility on hand. But for the most part, again, it wasn't like he was really pushing it too hard. It felt more like a goodbye than really a pitch. 
uh, to stay. And he wasn't getting that much confirmation from the others in the room and like, yeah, and like, we got you. Like, don't worry. Uh, so it did feel kind of like he was like, yeah, you know, I could tell that things are are not going to be going well for me that, uh, <laughs> coming up in the eviction. Now, meanwhile, while this was all happening, t is still debraiding her hair late into the night uh, with uh, Kimo and Rabina's help. I'm actually excited to kind of see the results. Like, I'm starting to see the vision as uh, they're being pulled out, but they got a long way to go. And I, I will say, too, uh, this is not helping the thought of TKR being a strong duo or putting any doubts in people's head about the three of them. Kimo and Rabina, who are normally attached to t uh metaphorically, are now visually attached to her, almost with what looks like umbilical cords as they're trying to peel these braids apart. Uh, so it's really just kind of solidifying the fact that they are such a strong trio that will always look out for each other. Uh, but people see that. I think there there is potentially plans to break that up next week if given the chance uh, by some, it would be uh, Kimo who would be leaving. Uh, so we'll see if that really goes uh, how it will. But there's still people who are looking at Leah and uh, Angela as people that they would potentially put up before them. So we'll see how that all plays out. Uh, as for the vote, I expect it to be tonight uh, a vote to five to one for Quinn to leave. Leah being that sole vote for Quinn to stay. Maybe, maybe Angela gets conned into it being a 4-2 vote, uh, thinking that Quinn uh, will be staying, so she'll be on the wrong side of it. Uh, but either way, I expect uh, lots of tears uh, as well. I don't think anyone is really happy that they have to do this, uh, but they feel like it's best for their game. Uh, I think they all really like Quinn as a person. And I think moving forward, each eviction uh, will likely be extremely tough on all of them in there. They they really have uh, always had this kind of mentality in the house that they all kind of love each other as people, but it's a game and, you know, in the game, I hate you, right? So it's been kind of this, this fun dynamic. But the thing is, with all of this bonding and with all of these feelings, I do expect it to cause quite a few bitter jury votes because uh, this is an emotional bunch that we're talking about. Now, Let's look ahead as well. We could pull up our uh, allegiance map here just to kind of talk a little bit too about, you know, how things might look uh, moving forward. MJ's talked about if she wins, she would put up Angela and Chemo with Leah as the potential replacement nominee, but she would really want Angela to go uh, out of uh, uh, all those three options. Cam would probably be somewhat similar. I think he would want uh, Chemo out though. Uh, and maybe it wouldn't be Leah as a replacement nominee. Potentially, it could be even Rubina as the replacement uh, in in that scenario if, if uh, he had to do one. Uh, if TKR were to happen to win, I think they would probably also go after uh, Leah and Angela, maybe even with MJ as an option there too. But I could even also see them going, hey, you know what? Maybe not t in this, but even uh, Chemo taking that shot at Cam, which is what pre people all pretty much assume Cam would do is put up, uh, Kimo would do is put up Cam. Uh, Angela, who knows? Uh, if Angela won HOH, uh, if history is any indication, she probably goes after MJ because she's the one who's most recently saved her. Um, but I do think Angela has been pushing the idea that TKR are a strong trio and could possibly take a shot uh, at them if she were to win HOH. Uh, and and Leah also, again, I think goes for, for TKR, but I think there's a good chance that she might take a shot at Chelsea if she if she can do it too. I think she, uh, of that uh, other trio that we have of Chelsea, Cam, and, and MJ, Leah feels probably the closest to MJ and, uh, and Cam even and feels probably the most comfortable with them not putting her up on the block than she would with Chelsea. So it would be interesting if Leah would win uh, as well. Other than that, though, uh, that pretty much covers everything we got. We will see the eviction tonight. Again, we will be live on the channel doing a watch party for that. We'll also be live on Friday morning. If you guys didn't know, we do Friday mornings here. Same update that you normally get every single uh, weekday. But on Fridays, we do it live. And then afterwards, I jump into the chat 
uh, and we talk for a while about everything that's been going da- down uh, inside the house. Uh, other reality shows as well. We'll be talking about uh, Challenge 40. We've got Survivor coming up as well. Uh, so it's always just a good time hanging out with you guys. Uh, thank you guys again so much for watching. Uh, if you are new here, hit that subscribe button. You like this video, hit that like button. Hit that notification bell. You'll never miss a video. You'll never miss a stream. Check out the links to all my socials. Pin comment down below uh, in the description as well. Uh, things like Twitter and Discord. Great place to keep track of when videos are getting posted. If uh, YouTube's notifications aren't going out. But also Discord as well. Great place to kind of chat with other Big Brother fans. Uh, and other reality shows, sports. Post pictures of your pets if you want to. Uh, also, uh, check out uh, Kick and Twitch. We're talking about, uh, you know... Things that we can do, especially postseason, different games, other shows that we want to watch. Uh, and we can kind of get away with some of that stuff over on places like Kick. So go on and check those out as well. Uh, thank you guys all again so much for watching. And I will see you tonight. We are a bunch of dumbasses. You guys suck.